Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Haggard. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, Sunday, the one coming up, February 14th, may be Valentine's Day. But for Iowa State, it has a little more significance. The legendary program will celebrate a milestone as they post their 100th year of competition. That afternoon, the Cyclones will face off against conference foe West Virginia in their final home match of the year. Now, it's no secret Iowa State owns one of the most storied traditions in the world of sport. Matter of fact, over the decades, the clones have accumulated eight team titles for the NCAA championships and 69 individual NCAA titles. And slowly over the years, they've accumulated something else, a name that is synonymous with success. The match, scheduled to begin at 2 o'clock, will also serve as Senior Day. Its four graduating seniors are Earl Hall, Will Stencil, Tyler Swope, and Tanner Weatherman. We've caught up with Tanner and Earl to discuss their final matches at Hilton. Uh, it's definitely bittersweet. It's been a it's been a long haul, a long ride, but it's been it's been great. I wouldn't change it for anything. I just appreciate all the support. You know, kind of had a little bit of up and down career. Um, people might have expected a little more out of me, and I've expected more out of myself. But through thick and thin, they've always supported me no matter uh, what. And uh, you know, I let them know that I've done everything in my, in my willpower to be the best I can. Leaving the training center and coming here, uh, it was probably one of the greatest things I've ever done. Uh, it's been a great ride and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, like, 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 this is like my last team besides like Olympic teams and world teams besides that. But like, th those teams won't be as close as how I am with these guys. Like, this is my family. Like, I've been with these guys for four years. We all, we've all been to, like through the uh, pain, sweat, and tears all together. And for it all just to come to an end, it's, it is bittersweet. Uh, I actually had my mom there for the uh, for my her first match to actually watch me wrestle since college. Since I've been in college, so that would be a great experience. I'm, like I have my mom, maybe my my dad and little brothers, but I don't know. It's just been a lot of, like a moment where I actually learn to appreciate and everything that I have. Like uh, like I already see myself like walking out the mat, like crying, hug, giving KJ a hug. I don't know what I'd do to the stands. Like I just I just love Cyclone Nation, and it's just a yeah, pretty bittersweet moment. I can't even really, really even put it in the words, but I wish I just, I hope somebody records like the whole thing for me. So, yeah. Do they have any other plans to celebrate 100 years pyrotechnics, you know, some fuzzy bears on the mat or what's going on? I don't know about the fuzzy bears, but I'm sure there'll be some fireworks, if not on the mat, a little off the mat. Many former national champs and All-Americans will be there, including Dale Bard, Stuart Carter, Pete Galliard, Gordon Hassman, Vic Marcucci, Tom Peckham, and Reg Wicks. Head coach Kevin Jackson joins us to talk about these former Cyclones and other features they'll have at the duel. Well, it's just a great day. You know, we're, we're, we're celebrating 100 years of, of wrestling, and that speaks for itself. Um, but we're going to honor our seniors. We're going to send them off the right way. Uh, we also have uh, 1965 National Championship team uh, we'll be honoring and recognizing. Uh, we'll have uh, the 1976 Big 8 Championship team. Uh, they were runner-ups uh, at the NTA Championships uh, that year. Um, so just several festivities, um, alumni, national champions um, will be in attendance, and um, we're just looking for a, a great uh, event. Um, it's uh, Valentine's Day, and it'll be a cheap date, and it won't take too long. So um, it's going to be a good day. Wrestling on Valentine's Day, that sounds like a great idea to me. I just want to be able to figure out where I can get a steak and a, maybe a glass of wine at the duel. I don't know about you, but I've had enough steak. All right, we're going to take it to break. International news is up next, but on the way there, let's take a look at the UWW Big Move of the Week. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Well, in his first competition since the World Championships, Jordan Burroughs won three of four bouts by Tech Fall and grabbed yet another gold medal at the Yasser Dagu. In the finals, Burroughs dispatched Kadziev of France 14-3, extending his record to an incredible, get this now, Hager, 118-2. That, of course, on the senior level. 
I mean, this is uh, right on Burroughs' plan. He's been able, you know, he told us earlier in the year that he just has a plan and is not to please really the fans. He's looking to get a gold medal, so he's not going to go out to all these different events. This was on his schedule, and he came home with a gold medal. So he's got a process, and you can't uh, can't fault him for doing what he uh, believes is going to get that gold medal. Dude is Jordan Burroughs. He can do whatever he wants to do. And you know what? Who's going to tell him no? He's Jordan Burroughs. He is. All right. We go to 275. Two-time NCAA champ, Tony Nelson. That's right. I said Tony Nelson, University of Minnesota trained, won a couple tech falls and a pin before falling to Turkey's Aguil in the finals and took home the silver medal. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I had forgotten Nelson was even competing. I think it may be just because we don't hear his name in a lot of international events and it gets kind of lost in the shovel, shuffle when he's here in the States. So it's great to see him picking up a couple, couple wins here at his first competition, I think, in international. Well, he had a pretty good Bill Farrell, too, so yeah, let's not discount that. All right, falling in the bronze medal match at 275, 2015 world team member Zach Ray. He dropped a close 3-1 decision to world bronze medalist Magomedov and finished fifth. This was a tough match for, for Ray. I mean, anytime you can, you're going up against a, a world medalist, you're going to have your hands full, and, and Ray for sure did. I mean, he just needs to figure out a way to attack more from his feet uh, if he's going to try to take somebody like Delagna about 125 kilograms. I think better yet, he needs to figure out a way on to Team USA in a permanent basis. That guy is super tough for sure. All right, coming off a silver medal at the Yvonne Uregan 2012 Olympic champ Jake Varner. He dropped an 8-2 decision to eventual bronze medalist Boluk Basi of Turkey in the opening round at 213. You know, it's so tough to compete overseas. I mean, Ivan Yarigan, when you can come home with a medal, that's impressive. And then to go go back and, and compete again at another tough level tournament, I mean, honestly, I'm not surprised that he, he kind of faltered there. But, I mean, uh, I would I would hang my hat on that Ivan Yarigan finish. All right. Well, competing for the first time since the World Championships, James Green fell on criteria. The score was 2-2 against Turkey's Aksoy. Neither Varner nor Green were pulled back into the repechage, however, and were eliminated in the opening round. I think uh, this new weight class is going to be a, a real test for, for James Green. Right now, he's ranked number one at that weight class, but Brett Metcalf is sitting there going, wait, I'm, I'm the guy. This is my weight class. I should be get the number one seed. And if anything else is different, then there's some corruption there. So we'll, we'll see what... Uh, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa. Wow. That's what... Hey, those are not my words. You so just said them. They, well, they're not my words. Those are Brent Metcalf's words. So if that, you're repeating what he I'm said. I'm repeating what he said. So he thinks he should be the number one guy when it comes to the Olympic and team trials of record, in Iowa City. And for a matter, matter of record, where were those uh, words said? Uh, Iowa Hawkeye Russ and Rumont Takedown Radio. Okay, so you can go back and listen to Metcalf's words, not Hager's words. All right. With more on the action overseas, we're joined now by USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott. Uh, we've, we saw the emergence of uh, an athlete that you and I covered at, at the collegiate level when he wrestled for the University of Minnesota. Where has Tony Nelson been? Well, Tony Nelson's a top heavyweight. I mean, he's got a very difficult challenge ahead of him to make our Olympic team. Obviously, Tervel delognev has been our man for many years. Uh, Zach Ray was on our world team last year. Uh, the NCAA champion, uh, Nick Wisdowski. Uh, has beaten uh, Nelson in freestyle. But Nelson just came off a great performance uh, in Turkey, uh, took a silver medal. He's going to be a force in Iowa City. The legend of Jordan Burroughs continues. He won gold at the Yasser Dagu, which ups his record to 118-2. and two. It is simply amazing to watch. I know you're probably closer to it than most. What are your thoughts on Jordan Burroughs? Well, Jordan has set high goals for himself, and those high goals include being the greatest American wrestler ever. And obviously, uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit more time for him to do that. Uh, John Smith won six straight goals. But Jordan has a commitment to that, and every time he steps on the mat, is exciting. He's a great athlete. He's, he's great for the sport. Internationally, they love him. Uh, here in the United States, we take great pride in his achievements. Um, but as a along with everyone else, he still has to make the next Olympic team. So uh, Jordan has a focus and a mission right now. Uh, he's uh, getting a lot of publicity for our sport, and he continues to maintain a level of excellence that's, you know, historic. And, and we're really excited to be part of that, that journey. But, you know, as Jordan will tell you, he's not as to where he wants to be yet. He wants to keep getting better, and uh, certainly he's going to be challenged here and around the world every time he wrestles. All right, stay tuned, wrestling fans. Next up, it's Under Armour's As I See It with Hollywood Wayne Boyd. Stay tuned.
All right, it is time to check in with Hollywood Wayne Boyd on the Under Armour As I See It segment here on Global Wrestling News. Well, it's time for Under Armour's As I See It with Hollywood Wayne Boyd. Wayne, lots of topics to cover this week. Welcome back. Thanks, Scott. It's always a pleasure to be here. Top of my list is a recent article in Inc. Magazine featuring Kevin Plank. Kevin Plank made the statement perhaps that we're more concerned with the state of our automobile and its construction and running of an automobile than we are with the human body. What can you tell us? Well, Plank, who's the uh, CEO and brought that company now to $4 billion, so, so they're, they're a serious uh, contributor in the market of sports, and they've shown an interest in wrestling, which I'm very excited about. And I was reading the Inc. magazine myself, and... Um, you know, it's technologically, do we understand what we put our bodies through? Do we understand the response we get? Are we guessing? And he's found some technology that he's willing to put $150 million into to bring about watches and computers and programs and dieting and all the stuff that you can actually track, follow, and get the expert advice about. So he's coming out with some new products and he's putting a lot of money and a lot of energy into other than apparel, you know, the, the these these incredible apps, which a guy that, like me that was born in 1947, it, it sounds like spaceship stuff, but, uh, you know, I've got a lot of confidence in this company, Under Armour, and I'm, I'm pleased to be working with them and be on the cutting edge of what could be happening in the future. So I will keep you posted. Inc. Magazine, the recent edition. Check out the article with Kevin Plank. We go to the NWCA Division I National Duels, and, and uh, Coach, I'm going to switch into Coach mode. This is a, a new year for the National Duels and a new format. Coach, what can you tell us? Uh, Mike Moyer called me up, asked me to get involved with this, um, so I'm, I'm pretty much aware of what's going on. It, it seems a hair rushed, but... Uh, February 20th, which is a Saturday, uh, Rutgers is going to go against Lehigh. And then uh, Sunday the 21st, it looks like Penn State and uh, North Carolina State. Now, that's an interesting matchup with North Carolina State coming on the way they are. They've got some super studs there. They've got their heavyweight two-time national champ, which, by the way, I know everybody's interested in how Schneider is going to do with him. That's a great matchup going to the NCAAs. But uh, Indiana is uh, still undecided who they're going to wrestle, but it looks like Nebraska is going to pull Oklahoma University. Michigan is probably going to wrestle Oklahoma State. And Ohio State on the 22nd, which is Monday, is going to get Edinburgh. And Iowa is going to be pinned against Missouri. So that all comes up here in a couple weeks. The weekend of February 20th is going to go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and it, it's going to be exciting to see how that works out. And, of course, Missouri versus Iowa, it's black and gold versus black and gold in a classic border-style brawl, and I like that one indeed. That'll do it for this week's edition of Under Armour's As I See It with Hollywood Wayne Boyd. Wayne, we always appreciate the time and your effort. Congratulations on your is it third consecutive Dave Schultz championship for the team, Tight Mercury Wrestling. I think that was our fourth, and we backed it up with three in a row at the U.S. Open. So we're national champions. We're Dave Schultz champions. We're still chasing Iran, and next year we plan on putting that one together. So uh, that happens in early December. So we're looking way ahead. We've got the Olympics before that. we got World Cup. we got some great things happening. I see where Burroughs just won a gold medal overseas. Uh uh, Tony Nelson gets silver. Uh, we're doing some good work. Doing some good work with some great athletes, that's for sure. We appreciate uh, Tight Mercury Wrestling Club and its sponsorship, Under Armour, as I see it, with Wayne Eric Boyd, Hollywood Wayne Boyd. Wayne, thanks so much. Bing, bang, here we go. Let's keep it going. All right, what matchups do you need to watch this weekend? Well, we've got a list for you, but that's coming up after the break. You'll need to stay tuned to GWN.
Well, come a weekend, we'll feature some of the biggest college matchups of the season. Tony, who's on your radar at 125? Number seven, Ronnie Rios from Oregon State versus number eight, Ryan Milhoff from Oklahoma. Both really showing a ton of improvement for last year uh, as a freshman coming here as a sophomore. Uh, uh, Rios has a higher ranking, but Milhoff is really on a hot streak took out uh, in returning NCAA finalists and has two wins over uh, top 10 wrestlers. Super tough, double dangerous those two. All right, top battles at 141. Number one ranked Dane Heil of Oklahoma State. Are you kidding me? And Stanford's number two ranked Joey McKenna. What do you have? I'm gonna tell you who I got, but you first. All right, this is a rematch of the Southern scuffle here and, and Heil came out on top, two to one in a tiebreaker. Joey McKenna though, I mean, he just continues to impress me. He puts points on the scoreboard and I think he goes into Stillwater and pulls off the upset. Oh yeah, you're taking McKenna. I took McKenna, the number two guy. You can take the number one you guy. You want me to take Dean you, Heil? You take the number one I'll guy. I'll take Dean Heil. Okay. Stillwater Stampede at Gallagher Iba Arena. I'm on the record. It's okay. All right, up next, the Battle of the Jordans at 165. The number two ranked Bo Jordan of Ohio State takes on his cousin Isaac Jordan. He's ranked third. That'll be Friday night. Bragging rights at the family table are on the line. I don't know if anyone's taking any calls on this. Uh, this is an anticipated match for the family and then fans, too. I mean, both these guys are undefeated on the season. Isaac came out on top last season of the Big Tens, and Bo uh, just really got it done, though, at the NCAAs, finished higher. So he's got some bragging rights there. So this is definitely the most compelling match of the weekend, Scott. I'm going to be like Congressman Jordan and not have an opinion here. At 184 and 197, both have top 10 matchups with number three ranked Nate Brown of Lehigh taking on the number six ranked Matt McCutcheon of Penn State. And number five, Connor Hartman from Duke is taking on the number seven ranked Jared Hott of Virginia Tech at 197. Of the two matchups, who do you see, who are you looking at? I'll be watching that McCutcheon versus Brown. I mean, Brown owns the series though, 4-0. Uh, but McCutcheon really has just turned it up a notch. You know, this season he has got big wins over uh, T.J. Dudley, Kenny Courts, and, and you know, recently, you know, this is a, uh, I think, like I said, turning up that notch. And if he can get this win over a top-ranked athlete, this will give Penn State, uh, you know, at least give the fans an idea that they're going to have a high, higher uh, All-American than they thought at the beginning of the season. All right, another huge matchup between two undefeated wrestlers. This one at 285. The number one guy in the country at heavy, Nick Wisdowski of NC State, the pride of the Wolf Pack. He'll face off the number three, Ty Walls of Virginia Tech. That'll be Friday night. And who will leave with their undefeated record intact? I uh, mean, you can't uh, go with anybody else but Wiz. I mean, he's 4-0 against Waltz, so on paper, this is a huge matchup, and I definitely tell everybody to, to watch it. Waltz uh, has great defense, Quiz has great offense, so I think if Waltz can get to those doubles that we saw at that All-Star Classic early in the year, he might have a, a shot at uh, getting that first win over Gwizdowski. And he is so quick, and talk about a guy made of muscle. I mean, his muscles are evident. Gwizdowski, super, super strong, and the pride of the Wolf Pack. I'll say it again, the pride of the Wolf Pack. You know what? Wolf Pack undefeated. They're going to have to face Penn State. They're, they are, Pop Paul Polizio's got a good thing going on. That's a name that just, uh, NC State just isn't really talked out of a whole, everyone's talking about Penn State, no one's talking about NC State. I'm talking about heavyweights. How about this? Penn State's heavyweight may be getting back into the lineup. Nick Nevels suffered an injury earlier in the year, according to PennLive.com's James Carlson. Seriously, can anyone touch Penn State if he goes back into the lineup? Penn State would go from not having probably an All-American at 285 to having a mid-level mid All-American. I mean, that, that's a lot of points that they get to put on the board that they just didn't think they had when uh, Nevels went out. So this is huge news for Cale Sanderson and crew, his fans. Real bad news for people in the Big Ten and uh, people like maybe NC State looking to kind of creep in those uh, team trophy hunts. All right, remember, Nevels was injured, right? It's not like he's walking out of the hospital room onto the wrestling mat. He's well, been training. He's been being rehabbed the appropriate way. He's going to come in. I'll bet you anything you're right. He's going to be in that top ten hunt. He's going to be in a hunt for an All-American status, one through eight. I believe Nevels is going to be a contender, and I believe he puts Penn State maybe, potentially, out of reach at the NCAAs. Yeah, I mean, he, he was ranked in the top ten prior to getting hurting. So, I mean, this is, this is just a, this is a big, big news, and this could put it out of reach. I mean, on paper, prior to the, the tournament even starting. All right, on paper or on screen, there are a ton of great performances last week, but there can only be one Under Armour Athlete of the Week. Who's getting the shirt this week? I'm going with Oklahoma State's Nolan Boyd with, for his 14-9 win over undefeated NCAA champ Gabe Dean, snapping his 52-match win streak. That's uh, Gabe Dean was ranked number one. 
Boyd was kind of in that top 10 area, so that's a that's a huge win. I would agree. Nola Boyd, congratulations. Great upset there, and great upset by you, sir, getting the script right for a change. Mm -hmm. Nice job. All right, we're out of time for Andrew F. Barth and Wayne Boyd and everybody else here at Global Wrestling News. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on Global Wrestling News.